moment for football lovers. Please welcome the NFL football great Seattle Seahawks quarterback, Russell Wilson, and co-founder of the Why Not You Foundation. He is joining us with his brother, co-founder, and CEO of Limitless Minds, Harry Wilson. Well, thanks for having us. Russ and I feel honored to be here. Russ, uh, a few years ago, you and I decided to start Limitless Minds, an organization built on you know, the vision to lead a global mindset and well-being movement. And we want to lead the charge, right? We want to lead the charge to create a new culture around mental health. We want to normalize, democratize, and mobilize the idea that mental conditioning isn't just for the exclusive select few like yourself, right? But, but let's talk about why we did it. You know, let's talk about why we did it. Why is mental health, mental conditioning, adversity tolerance, and well-being important to you as an individual? Well, I think that's a great point, Harry. First of all, uh, good to be on here with you. It's it's amazing because when you get to work with your brother every day, you know, we used to battle back and forth when we were younger. Now we get to now we get to partner together and, and create business and create. Uh, create so many opportunities for people to continue to expand and, and grow and, as you mentioned, normalize, democratize and mobilize. And uh, I think for us, you know, you know, Harry, I remember us sitting on the back porch in, in my house in Seattle and, you know, we we're just having our brother check up and was, you're just seeing how things were going. And you were like, what, what's, what, what are you thinking about? What I asked you what you're thinking about doing, what, what's going on in our worlds. And I get those three beautiful daughters, you know, and I, and I said, you know, you know, what, what's going on with them, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward, you know, you, you had you had this really cool idea. You say, you know, <clears throat> I've been thinking about really kind of branching out. I want I want to take a risk. Uh, I want to I want to build something. I want to be known for making a difference. And I said, well, what, what are you thinking about? And uh, I remember you said, you know, I, I want to I, want, I, I work in the sales force every day. And I see that people, the best, the most successful people who are, who are in the sales force, um, it's, it's a lot of it's mental, a lot of it's their mental game. And, you know, I want to, I want to expand that. I want to take that out to the world. And at the same time, um, I kind of laughed and I was like, bro, the craziest thing is me and Trevor Moad are talking about how we want to be able to take this mental approach from the sports arena and take it into the real world and everyday life and how that's affected in a positive manner, my world and my life. And, and uh, the, it's amazing how God kind of works and everything kind of collides at the same time. And so next thing you know, uh, within, I don't know, about a week, we had this new company called Limitless Minds. And we started off this thing. We took a big risk and we, we uh, partnered this thing up together. And it's been amazing to see how many people's lives we've been able to impact and change and companies as well. Um, but I think that, you know, the most important thing is, is that and the crazy thing, this is before COVID ever happened. This was... Right you know, you know, probably what, about nine months before all that happened. And we, we were running full steam ahead, exponentially growing like crazy um, with Limitless Minds. And I think that what we really wanted to talk about was, is that the reality with, you know, the world is, is that, and, and something that we've studied, and especially in the sports arena, but even in the business world and in life in general, is, is that it's really, really um, great to be positive. I'm a positive person by nature. Anybody who knows me, I'm positive for sure. Yes, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm positive, as you know, Harry, and, and you are as well. But what we do know is it's hard to be positive uh, if somebody's battling cancer. Yeah. It's hard to be and it's hard to be positive when when somebody's going through something like COVID. It's hard to be positive when there's uh, struggles in, the, in in America. It's hard to be positive when 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 business may not be going the way you want, or your relationship, or your marriage, or whatever it may be. And what, what we found was, is that it's, you know, what does work hundred percent of the time is negativity. And so what we really found is that the best, most successful athletes, most successful business leaders, most successful relationships, to be honest with you, and, and businesses, they, they, um, they, they do really well in this thought process behind neutral thinking. And that's why we, you know, really um, kind of created this thought around neutral thinking and talking about how important it is to be neutral uh, in the highs and the lows. And the reality is everybody has a brain, everybody has a mind and to be able to, you know, in, uh, enhance that at the best of, of, of their possibilities that we possibly could and, and showing them and giving them that awareness. And I think that was really key. Yeah. Um, I, I'd love to hear from you, Harry, you know. Well, I mean, you know, men mental health is health, right? Mental health is health. And I think that, you know, there's a stigma or at least there's been a stigma on mental health, right? Whether it be as youth in our schools, whether it be just in, with amongst your friends, your community, that that mental health is something out something outside of that box of health, right? But when you think about it, 
mental health is a continuum that ranges and stretches a wide array of outcomes, right? From, from basic stress and performance anxiety, all the way to clinical depression and, and, and beyond, right? And so, you know, we need to normalize, as we mentioned earlier, the awareness of just like the other common health checks, right? Blood pressure, cholesterol, hopefully you're getting that stuff checked, by the way, because um, you're getting, you know, you're getting a little older every year. So, so you need to make sure you get those things checked. <laughs> no, but, um, but blood pressure, cholesterol, you know, just all these things we manage, right? And, 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 and we should be doing the same thing with our mind. We should be managing and tracking our status with our mind. Like, like our, just like our weight, our nutrition, our fitness, we check that, right? We used to get on the scale. Um, we, you know, we maintain, you know, so just like these maintenance type um, doctor visits, we should be doing the same thing with our mental health. Now, as a premier athlete, you, you, you have a tremendous stage, right? You have a tremendous stage to impact the world, right? It appears that, you know, we're seeing a ton of progress, uh, you know, a really a rising tide in the awareness of mental health and, 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 and just like in, in the NFL or in the NBA, we're seeing a lot of conversation around that. Why do you think that is? Why, why now? And how important is it for elite athletes to use this platform? Well, the crazy thing is, is that um, you asked a great question, Harry, because, you know, why now? Why, why does everybody start talking about this idea around mental health and everything else? Well, the funny thing is, is that, you know, for me personally, um, I've been doing it for the past 10, 11 years, um, really working on enhancing my thought process. Because what I knew was that when I went to, when I, got, when I came out of the um, college and to go get ready for the NFL combine, okay, I go down to IMG down at Bradenton, Florida. I meet this guy, Trevor Moad, who's one of the best sports mental coaches in the, in the world. I worked with some of the best athletes, worked with the University of Alabama, Nick Saban for years, worked with the University of Georgia, LA Clippers, all these different teams, all these different athletes, Michael Johnson. Anyways, so I meet this guy, I run into this guy and, and, and I get to IMG and there's all these premier elite athletes there at this location. And I'm thinking to myself, what's going to separate me from them? Yeah. And I knew that I could throw a ball and throw a nice tight spiral, 70 yards, put it on the money or if I wanted to and could run around and do all that. But there's, 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 there's a handful of guys who can do that too. And I said, what's going to make me a world champion? What's going to make me, what's going to separate me to be the best in the world? And I knew there was one thing. It was my mind. I knew that I had been through so much growing up that my mind was prepared for the challenges. I knew that I looked forward to obstacles. And so, and I had been doing that stuff and I had, you know, gone through so much. We had gone through so much here growing up, you know, that we kind of had to have this, as you mentioned earlier, adversity tolerance that naturally builds up. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to actually enhance it and actually expand it. I wanted to actually dive into, I wanted to invest into my mind, into my, into me. And so what I did was I started uh, really diving into this and, and Trevor Moore and I spent, we spent two to three hours every day talking about mindset and, and controlling our language. Language, to, to keep it more simplified for everyone, language was the key thing that we focused on. What do we say? What do we not say? Right. So that was really key for me. And I think that nowadays athletes are talking about it more. I think social media brings more awareness, first of all. Yeah. I think second of all, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, there wasn't really that that easy access to social media and, and to athletes. So I think that help, allows that to happen more often. But I think also too, I think that there's been um, a, a, an awakening, a, a wide awakening, as you mentioned, a rising tide in this thought process that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to, to, to talk about it. And I think that, um, I think what's really important is, is that, you know, what we talk about with limitless minds and what we've been able to do and understand and, and, and really, um, create a, a really great opportunity for others with is that, you know, I, I think you want number one, our language, but also two is, you know, the actual thought process of how we actually get back on track, you know, how, how fast can we get back on track as an athlete, like you miss a shot, you know, how fast can you get back, you, you miss a throw, you miss a catch, you, 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 you don't put that one in, right, you know, I think the same thing in in business, you know, sometimes you may not get that sale. Sometimes you, you may not get that opportunity. Sometimes you, you may get let go, but are, do you give up? Do you give in? And I think that ultimately, you know, we control our mindset. We control how we think and what we say. And, um, and, and we've really widened and opened that door uh, to talk about it more. And that's been, that's been a lot of fun. And it's been something that I've really, as an athlete, I, I really want to take pride in. And I want to be a leader in, in, in mindset training and and how we all can get better together. That's right. That's right. And you, and you mentioned something that I, I wanted to pull out of you again, because you talk about social media, right? And the impact that's playing. It feels like social media, you know, it's one of those things. It's a, it, it's, it's a, it's a pro and a con in some cases, right? And um, 
you know, we see it as, as bringing positive impact. We see it also bring negative impact. Um, how do you feel like it, how do you feel like it plays a role? And the reason why I ask is because we talk a lot about garbage in, garbage out, right? We, a lot of people ask, hey, what can I do to get on the level of somebody like a Russell Wilson or somebody who's thinking at that level? And a lot of times we talk about, it's not you know, so much what Russell Wilson does, like the three steps to what Russell Wilson does. It's really more so the things, Russell's, your, your, your maniacal discipline at removing things, right? Um, being, being mindful of what you watch, what you consume, what you listen to, what you, what you do on social media, for example. How does social media play a role in your world? And how, do you, how, do you, how does one manage the, the, the pros and cons of it? Well, you're exactly right. I think that in today's age, you know, especially being an athlete or just being a young person in general, um, there's so much to see. There's so much to experience. There's so much to have access to. I mean, I think there's so much to take you away and distract you uh, in so many different ways. And, you know, I, I think also, too, it's not always the extreme things, obviously those things. But I, I think that also, too, it's just it's just time consuming. Just to be honest with you, I, I get more distracted by social media just by being by the consumption of time. You know what I mean? Like, so when I realize that I'm sitting on my phone and, and I'm and I'm on my phone for 45 minutes and I'm like, okay, what have I done today? I'm like, oh, I haven't done anything. You know, it's like, hold on right. a second, but let me reprioritize my time. Mm -hmm. And so then what I do with my time is if I am going to be on social media, okay, let me, let me, let me have five minutes of grace period to, to look, to look at my phone and, and look at my friends and stuff like that. But the next 40 minutes, if I'm going to, if I, if I'm going to choose to do that, let me make sure I'm receiving something. Let me make sure I'm growing. And so, um, you know, for me, I, I really try to watch what I watch, you know, pay attention to what I'm, you know, watching and, and what I'm feeding myself, because what you're feeding yourself is also what's going to come out. I and so, um, and yeah. so I think that's such a critical thing as an athlete, you know, for me personally, a little tactic that I do during the season, um, Harry, as you know, season's crazy. There's always, you know, being one of the, uh, you, know, the you know, one of 32 men in the world, that get to do what I get to do. There's 7.5 billion people in the world. I'm one of 32. So um, you know, when, when, you, when you have that role in your shoulders, um, <clears throat> there's every day there's people are talking about you good, good and bad and different. And yeah. so what I learned to do early on in my rookie year is I, I you know, the TVs, I, I don't cut the TV off necessarily. What I do is I just don't look. <laughs> the TV will go to the cafeteria and we'll be eating or whatever. I'll walk into the cafeteria and there'll be tons of TVs in there and they have all the ESPN, um, this and this and that. And I literally, I, when the TV, I see the TV, I, I turn, I look the opposite direction. I keep my head down, <clears throat> keep my head down. Yeah. I keep going. And that's a big thing for me. Um, <clears throat> so I think that, you know, for me, I, I think really paying attention to what's going to feed me, what's going to help me, what's going to help my teammates, what's going to help everyone around me, and then saying those things, speaking those things in life, into existence. I think the other thing that's a key distraction is when you're in the huddle, for example, Harry, as you know, and you played wide receiver back in the day, it's like when you're in the huddle, that in-between time, you know, the 40-second clock, there's an in-between time. It's just like our thoughts in life. It's just like our thoughts when you're in a conversation, it's just like our thoughts in a relationship or in business is that there's this in between time, there's this play clock time of something is said, or something happens or something is not done. And then we have our, these internal thoughts that feed into us. And we either feed into that internal thought, or, or we can we can push it aside and, and, and let let the next moment just happen. And so one of the things that I, I personally and, and try to do in, in huddle, for example, is I don't let the in-between time shift guys. I make sure that we're talking about the next moment, the next play. The last one's gone. It's already gone. It, it's already it's already occurred. And so how can I use that for the next moment? And so, the, the, you know, the thing I think realize about life in general is that it's just a great collection of all these moments. And how do we take these moments and collide them together to be the best that they can possibly be each each day. And I think that's something that I've really, really focused on in my own personal career, but also in business. Um, I've been fortunate to be, you know, on, on the entrepreneurial side of things and really building tr real business with the House of LRNC, with Limitless Minds, with some of the things we have going on in the world. And uh, it's been an amazing journey. I think the thing that allows me to be successful in my career um, is that you, know, you surround yourself around amazing people that are actually smarter and better than you. <laughs> and that's why, that's why, uh, you know, I'm around you and that's why you, you get to run the business on a day to day. But, you know, for me, um, you know, I, I know that your knowledge is actually even greater than mine. So you're going to actually elevate me. And I think that's something that I've always loved to do. I love that. I love that. And, and then before we close, one thing I know that you, I know that you're passionate about is our youth, right? Um, you know, you founded the why not you foundation, 
which I get to serve on and we, and we both serve on. And, and you, so you're passionate about empowering our youth. And, and, and I, so I want to ask you, um, what, it, what is your vision for the future, right? You know, how, how, do we, how do we talk about mental health? How do we normalize it, especially in that, in that space of our, you know, our school systems, right? How do, we, how do we provide curriculum to schools? If you were to imagine an ideal state, right, for, for, for your kids, right? Um, future Sienna and Wynn. Um, and then my three, Gracie, Nora, and Maddie, right? We got six kids between the two of us. Like, what is that ideal state uh, of what, what, what they're going through in the curriculum? Or at least, if not, their, if not our kids, their kids. You know what I mean? Um, what do you well, think? That, that's the thing I'm most excited about, Harry, because, you know, like you said, we got six kids between the, between, uh, the two of us. And, yeah. uh, and the crazy part of this is that those Wilson kids, I mean, as we think about it, they're going to they're gonna be world changers. They're going to be they're going to be map makers. They're going to be able to do so much in the world that they're going to be able to impact. And, and the only way that they can do that is if we show them, if we guide them, if we give them everything that we possibly can. And so I think the thing that I desire, not only for our kids, Harry, but but for y'all's kids, as you as you're listening to this, um, you know, I, I think about I, I go back to when I was in school. I go back to when I was 14 years old when I was in middle school. And if I went to the guidance counselor, you know, just to be honest with you, you got these little small little clicks and people would say, you know, he, he's effed up. What's wrong with him? Why is he going to the guidance counselor? Why is, why is she doing this? And, why? and people ask those questions. And I think that what's interesting is, is that let's change that stigmatism. What we're passionate about with Limitless Minds, obviously, is to help, you know, corporate business, to help you know, premier athletes and, and leaders and, 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 and teammates and employees and everything else. But we also want to help, um, you know, we, all, we don't have the everyday person. That's why we talked about earlier, normalize, democratize, and mobilize. We want to be able to change the world. And I think so with our foundation, one e Foundation, but also with Limitless Minds, we're so passionate about the youth. We're so passionate about education, the future of education, and how, you know, the mindset should be... Um, you know, connected just like, you know, biology, just like algebra one, how can we make, how can we make, um, you know, mindset training, you know, just like algebra one, the significance of what that is in, in our school systems. And so like making a prerequisite, right. I mean, just like, you know, you have to take, you know, I don't know if they do this anymore, but you have to take algebra one before you can move to, you know, X, right. Or calculus or whatever it is, right. You know, you have to take, you have to take Spanish one before Spanish two and then, you know, and then AP so on and so forth. And, and it should be kind of part of that continuum of learning. To, you know, maybe a requirement to graduate, right? Certainly, a, maybe a requirement before you move into high school. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that, that I'm excited about that too. And I think that, you know, whether it be Limitless Minds, a combination with Why Not You Foundation, where both those organizations are looking to, to impact our schools um, and, and, and really impact our future, right? Now, um, my final question for you is a call to action. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, we have hundreds of thousands of people um, engaging in the Never Alone Summit in 2021. Um, and they're coming from a lot of different areas. A lot of, a lot of folks have been impacted by, um, you know, by mental health, uh, as we all have. Um, there's different policymakers that are listening and so on and so forth. What would, you, what would be your call to action for anybody listening um, uh, from this Never Alone Summit? Well, I think the first thing is, is let's, not talk, let's not stop talking about mental health. You know, I, I'm a big believer that, you know, the more that we talk about it, the more that we grow together, the more that we normalize it, uh, the better. I think, I think the thing, my, my call to action um, would be for anybody who, who wants to grow with us, um, anybody who, who wants to learn with us and, and to understand that what successful people do, um, there is no mistaking wh why they become successful. Um, it's because of obviously their talent, but also because of the mental aptitude that they have and how much they practice it and how much they're willing to grow. And the funny thing is, is that there's even more room. There's more room for me to grow. There's more room for us all to grow. And so we're on the journey of growth with Limitless Minds. And so it's been amazing to take people from the beginning stages to the expert stage, to the, the expert stage to the, to the one and only stage. And I think for us, um, what we want to be able to do is, is grow you into your next phase and grow, grow, grow each one of us into, into the next phase of your life. And I think that's been what we're really, really passionate about with Limitless Minds. And so I think the first step would be, number one, control your language. I think language is everything. How you, how you speak is really critical. I think it's super important. And that's what, something that we really, really harp on with Limitless Minds. Like if you're, if you're going to uh, have a Limitless Mind, you got you to gotta control your language. And, and what you say, what you don't say, how you say it, uh, the tonality of how you say it is everything. And so we, we're really passionate about helping with that. Um, that's something that we're, we're really dedicated to. I think also, too, um, there's, number two, there's, there's a great opportunity 
um, as, as Harry and I've been talking about is democratizing um, mindset. And so we're on, we're on a journey together of Limitless Minds to democratize it across the world. And uh, we're really passionate about that. We're doing some really cool stuff up and coming in, in terms of technology around it and some of the things, ideas and things that we have going on. So we'd love to connect with you and uh, be, be there for you and be there and, and, and to do this with you. And so I think that for us, um, we want to be able to change the world one thought at a time, one, one word at a time, um, and to be able to do it you know, at the Never Alone Summit is, is such a blessing to be able to talk to you all and to um, to be able to give you a little bit of insight of how we've thought about it and how neutral thinking is the way. Um, and, and I want to say last, one last thing before we, I know we have to take off, yeah. but yeah. as I said earlier at the very beginning, I, I'm definitely a positive person, you know, and I, I, I believe that negativity works 100% of the time, but neutral thinking is the way to be. And I, I want to explain something about that. Sometimes people ask me, Russell, does neutral thinking mean that you're that you, that you, that you're, you know, that you have no passion. I said, well, actually, if anybody knows me, I'm a super passionate guy. You see me on the field, whatever it may be. Uh, I'm a, I'm ultra passionate. I'm, 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 I'm ultimate, I'm ultimate passionate kind of guy. But the thing about it is, is that um, what neutral thinking allows me to do is to be, to be maintain my thought process so I can achieve high and, and, and to continue to do it over and over again. And I think also too, what allows me to do is, is that uh, it allows me to, to play with great emotion right? And to be passionate about what I get to do and my gift in the world. But, I, you know, I can play with great emotion, but I don't have to be emotional. Right. And I think that's really key. I think it's really key because it allows me to go with the waves and understand that, hey, listen, I'm going to be better to, to, today than I was yesterday. Tomorrow, I'm going to be better tomorrow than I am today. And I think that simplicity um, of, of my thought process has really allowed me to be successful year in and year out, yeah. not, not only on the, on the football field, but also in business and also in life and spiritually and, and and relationally and everything else and so i'm still growing and i want you guys to continue to grow with me and harry and if you want to grow with us uh come come join us on you know with limitless minds we have so much amazing things going on and and harry i'll let you uh finish this thing off yeah no man i love that i love what you said and, and you know i think that controlling our language controlling what we consume right just like we would our diet be careful what we consume from the standpoint of the negativity around us because usually that is going to generate some sort of output we don't we're not looking for right um, so go on that negativity diet. Uh, I think that's something that's that's important to do. You know, Limitless Minds, you can follow us and find us at www.thinkbig-gofar.com. You can also find us on socials at the same handle, Think Big Go Far, uh, Think Big underscore Go Far. And then also you can find us on, find us on LinkedIn as well, Limitless Minds. Um, Why Not You Foundation, please follow us there on all across all socials as well. Uh, Russ and team are doing some great work with the foundation. Um, empowering our, our today's youth and the future youth and there's um, an academy that's that's launched and that's opening in the fall that's going to be impactful and, and limitless minds is actually putting curriculum in there um, mental health mental well-being mental conditioning is going to be a part of the curriculum of this school so that's really fantastic russell kudos to you and sierra for for the, what the work you guys are doing with the foundation and I'm, I'm just honored to be a part of it um so we thank you um that's i think i think that's a good mic drop russ i think that's a good mic drop i mean yeah, well, we, we, we dropped the mic on well done, bro. Um, I, I, I thank everyone at the Never Alone Summit 2021. As we like to say, the best is ahead. And back to you.